Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Ask EVGA. Uh, you're probably going to notice something a little bit new. We have a new set, um, just some stuff we use to spruce up this set here. So um, we got some questions. Actually our first Ask EVGA segment has gone live on YouTube and we fielded some questions from the YouTube comments there. So be sure to comment below and we will get to questions um, from future videos as well. Okay, so to jump right in again, mm -hmm. um, YouTube Watcher on YouTube asked, are you going to make a GTX 1080 Ti classified? Okay, um, interesting question. Uh, I'm not that privy to products that are coming out in the future, so I don't know. Um, but at the same time, I don't personally believe that there will be any classified model of the 1080 Ti. Uh, we already have a top-end flagship card for the 1080 Ti lineup, and that is the class, or the, the Kingpin, I almost said classified. Uh, whereas for the 1080 cards, the flagship for that is the classified, and that slots in above the FTW, just as the Kingpin slots in above the FTW3 uh, for the 1080 Ti. And historically, that's how we've done um, sort of the 80 versus the Ti models uh, for uh, NVIDIA graphics cards and EVGA cards. Um, so I, I don't expect that to really change, but who knows? We, we don't know what the future holds, so uh, stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, the next question here is asked by an Anton via Alta uh, on YouTube. Uh, explain the different limits you can run into while overclocking, i.e. voltage, temps, power, uh, tips on how to get higher clocks while working within those limits. Okay, so uh, pretty much the most important thing to mention here is that uh, temperatures tend to be the most closely tied to overclocking or performance. So. Um, this has been sort of tying into temperature more and more every mm -hmm. generation, mm -hmm. Pascal being the right. most tied to temperature right. as of uh, so far. Right. Um, so if you want more stable performance um, or better overclocking headroom, generally the thing you want to do is decrease that temperature. Right. So as cold as possible. Right. Um, that's why you see guys like Kingpin doing mm -hmm. records sure. or setting, sure. uh, you know, breaking records using liquid nitrogen because they can cool those components down to minus hundreds of degrees. Um, and then as far as little tips and tricks, uh, Ray actually already did a video that we posted a few weeks back, so I would go look into our history, check out the overclocking video. He's going to give a lot of good tips and, and things to kind of mess around with to do some general overclocking. Yeah, if you're if you're looking for kind of the highest performance on, especially like a Pascal card, mm -hmm. um, really take a, a good look at some more water-cooled cards. Because uh, in my experience, um, if you can get it underwater, pulling that temperature way down, that can have a big effect on, yeah. what, on what kind of clocks you can get on these cards. Definitely. Okay, and um, Pascowitz on YouTube asks, is manual overclocking pretty much dead? Mm -hmm. Heavy one. Heavy question. Yes, heavy question. Um, no, it's it's not dead. Um, you can definitely still manual overclock and get higher performance. Uh, I, for example, can't get the performance of my 1080 uh, Ti SC2 without doing a manual overclock. Um, so part of that question, I think, is coming from NVIDIA Boost 3.0 and NVIDIA Boost over the generations and how that makes it so that um, even out of the box, your card may be uh, way above with the advertised base and boost clocks. Um, that's great technology that really just is performance for you as the user and uh, that's something that um, I feel like will probably end up getting refined and improved um, but at the same time I think there just about always be a place for manual overclocking yeah. and uh, not just that but also um, creating specific overclocking profiles for different tasks so I have like a silent gaming profile on mm -hmm. uh, Precision XOC that's lower fan speeds lower clocks on games that don't need it and then I have like an extreme overclocking one where it's I don't care about the noise I want the performance so right. that type of tuning and making your system just perfect I don't think that's going anywhere um, so in, even in future generations of products I believe you'll still have pretty good manual overclocking yeah and it, uh just to mention as well, we have coming out the um, OC robot, mm -hmm. which will overclock automatically a CPU. Right. Um, the GPUs with GPU Boost 3.0, it actually just kind of looks at over overhead that it can find on its own, but it doesn't even stress test the thing. So, sure. um, you know, even with the OC robot or any of these automatic features, 
we're still all, always able to tweak a little bit yeah. higher than yeah. that. So yeah, and it's good that you mentioned CPUs because I was actually I read that question and I thought immediately thought GPUs. So yeah, that's the other side of it. Um, I feel like with CPUs, manual overclocking and really getting like memory timings in and voltage just right is always going to be one of those things that that needs uh, an experienced hand. Yeah, it's an art form. It is an art form. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, Paskowitz actually asked another question that we'll have on here as well. Uh, this will be for Joseph. Um, would EVGA, maybe Kingpin, ever consider selling a delitting or direct die kit? Um, that is a bit of an interesting question. Actually, the whole uh, delitting thing is generally going to be referring to CPUs. Uh, GPUs, ever since, what was it, the 400 Four, 400 series to 500 series. 400 to the 500. Um, the 500 basically got rid of the IHS right. on GPUs. So they are technically already delitted. Right. A GPU die uh, is going to already be exposed and have direct contact to the thermal compound and then to the cooler or the heat sink. Um, as far as using things like typically for delitting, you're going to want to use something like liquid metal. We don't recommend using liquid metal. It does eat away at the die. Uh, and if you ever look at any of these videos where they have used uh, liquid metal on a GPU die, the die, um, you can see the actual sure. Uh, sure. components in there and stuff. It, it really rips apart that metal. So sure. it's sure. not recommended at all to do that. Um, but if you are going to, you don't actually, you can't pull anything off of that die. So right. Yeah, I don't see us really releasing a D-Lid kit for CPUs. It becomes kind of too much of a warranty question at that point. Yeah. My hope is that the industry kind of moves towards soldered chips anyway. Yes. Where yeah. you don't really need to D-Lid them. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Uh, you know, there's always change in our industry. Um, but yeah, and as far as like direct die, that's why on GPUs we can get away with a uh, with like a CLC 120 size cooler on mm -hmm. something like a 1080 Ti, which is a 250 watt component, and still get really, really low temperatures. It's because it's got a big die and yeah. it's directly contacting that cold plate. So that's something that GPUs had to do long ago. Yeah, yeah. I actually watched a really great video from actually hardware overclocking, which okay. is Buildzoid. Sure. Um, and he went into the reasons you would actually delid mm -hmm. and where those. Uh, where those temperature, um, what would you call it? It's like thresholds. Yeah, like where, where those thresholds there. basically are going to be, um, well, where you'll hit those thresholds. And so at a certain point, you can put as many radiators sure. as you want sure. in between, yeah. and it's not, not going to cool help. any further. Right. And so that's why people delit is they want to get that direct contact. Well, the GPUs already have that, so right. yeah. pretty good for that. Uh, the next question is from Joe Tippett on YouTube. Uh, and he says, I have a GTX 1080 classified that seems to be running unusually warm. Uh, he's running max fans, no overclock, uh, and the temps he's reaching is about 82 degrees Celsius. Okay. And while it, uh, that's while playing Fortnite or Battlefield 1 at 1440p. Uh, and then 92C when doing tests with like Fermark, like okay. a torture test. Uh, and then he puts in some other details there. But essentially, he's asking, is it worth RMAing that card? Is that an issue or not? OK, fair enough. Um, yeah, that is a little on the hot side for that card, realistically. Um, the one thing here, and it, it does look like you, you focused on um, doing a thermal paste swap. That's a good idea, mm -hmm. um, because there's any issues with what's on there. From the factory, the thermal paste should always be good. Um, but at the same time, you can always pull it apart and replace it without uh, affecting your warranty. Um, so that's a good thing to try. Um, it looks like you've got pretty good airflow in your case. But one thing that I want uh, you to be aware of is that um, even with good airflow, you may have scenarios where the air is moving around in your case in a way that is not conducive to cooling that card. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing I would recommend trying is uh, pull the side panel off. Um, yeah. Try to do it in as much of an open air environment as possible, just letting the card get as much ambient air around. And uh, you've, you also mentioned uh, that your ambient temperatures are a little high, but not too high. Um, you know, test on a fairly ordinary temperature day, you know, 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, um, and see what type of temperatures you're getting. If you're seeing you know, four or five Celsius drop just by pulling off that side panel, then you're probably within what we would expect. If, however, it stays about the same, your airflow totally was not the issue in the case, then sure, go ahead and, and contact our support and uh, we'll help you out from there. Yeah. 
And uh, let's go on here to the next question. This is by WG on YouTube. Uh, how much does Silicon Lottery affect performance with custom cards? Are FTW cards always bend higher than SC cards? Uh, I have seen SC or even reference GPUs um, far higher than my 1080 Ti FTW3, um, which is unstable above 20, 37 megahertz. <laughs> which is pretty high. Well, yeah. The first thing to mention is 20, 37 megahertz on a 1080 Ti is is actually very high. Yeah. Um, the Kingpin Edition cards, uh, we guarantee a 2025, mm -hmm. and you're paying a premium to get right. that high of a guaranteed clock, right. um, which is pretty extreme. Right. So you might be able to find examples of people online or maybe even a friend or two that a reference card might reach over 20, 37 megahertz, but mm -hmm. it's, it's actually very uncommon to have sure. a reference card reach that high. Um, and then another thing is we, we don't actually bin the cards. Um, we do test them to make sure that they run at the guaranteed speeds that we're um, you know, offering right. for that particular card. Uh, but we, we actually do not bin them specifically to see, you know, it, it, that's why we call it the silicon lottery. Right. Um, it's not something that we are going to guarantee a specific clock unless that's already something like what what right. the kingpins do or what the FTW minimum is, right. but um, we don't guarantee any overclocking right. beyond that. Right. Uh, so always keep that in mind. Right. And, it, and it's worth noting, you know, if you if you've got a card that has a really special, you know, one the silicon lottery, mm -hmm. um, having one of the higher end models that has the bigger power ability that has the VRMs that can supply more power uh, may come in handy in giving you a little bit higher overclock. And the opposite yeah. of that is true as well. Yeah. You could have a card that totally lost the silicon lottery and isn't a very good overclocker, and then having the extra power of something like an FTW3 may come in handy because your chip may actually need it yeah. to reach those higher clocks. Yeah, um, so. and th that's important to mention something I missed basically is, is yes, those VRMs do make a bit of a difference in most cases. Sure. Um, it, it, the additional features that we add on to things like a FTW card, uh, but again, you are subject to the lottery. Uh, if that GPU die is basically of a slightly lower quality, um, then you know it won't reach that guaranteed speed. And if it's not reaching the guaranteed speed that we give, uh, contact us right. and we'll get that replaced sure. for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one final note on that: um, my card, my 1080 Ti, will also only do, well, not only, but its max is also about 2037. And uh, mm -hmm. in doing the overclocky video, we had a very hard time getting a card that could match and yeah. beat it. So uh, yeah. it is difficult to find something that'll go faster than that. You'll see it higher on like the 1080, um, but that's about a 40% uh, smaller die as far as uh, the actual CUDA cores and the complexity. Yeah. So 1080 Ti's do run a little bit slower. Yeah, and at 2037, I would, yeah. I'd say you pretty good. It sounds yeah. like you kind of won the lottery yeah, in that sense. That's uh, that's none of the almost cards that I've had are reaching that. So. 14 or so teraflops, so that's a very, yeah. very powerful system. So, uh, And then the last question is from an anonymous member of our PM team. Uh, why does Ray move his hands so much? I think I've been very good during this video and, and just keeping my hands down here. I do, when I talk, I'll do a lot of this animated. Um, you don't have to watch me, but uh, <laughs> I would love it if you did. How do you get your attention off that, though, you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's you're, true. you're bringing in the attention. Yeah. I think that's a skill of, you know, good public speaking, to be honest. So, um, thank he, you. He's a little more actionable than I am. <laughs> so, good for you, Ray. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, as ever, um, please put your comments and your questions in the comments below, and uh, we'll sift through those and find some good ones to put in a future episode. Um, you have a good rest of your day. Have a good one.